if you're bullying yourself in a diet, the mitochondria are clearly dysfunctional and they are the, obviously the rate limiting factor when it comes to burning fatty acids. Your groundbreaking stack of mitochondrial upregulation uh, plus the 5 amino 1MQ that I added to it. Hmm. So 5 amino 1MQ, SLUPP332, methylene blue, and mitochondrial open reading frame of the 12 SRRNAC, aka Mod C. Um, game changer for the entire okay. fitness community. Everybody is, uh, should be giving you blowjobs <laughs> and, reach, and reach around. No, 100%. 100%, <laughs> dude. 100%. Do you know how many, how many people are talking about oh, this I shit? I know. Now? I know. It's, it's right? pretty. I, I, I talked about 5 amino 1 and pure Motsi a while ago, and then you introduced SLUPP3 uh, PP3, SLU PP3 and methylene blue. And I mean, I, I run it, I got energy for days. I talk way too fast. That's why I mumble over my own words. But um, it doesn't matter where I am in a steep caloric deficit or off season. It's just energy, energy, energy. It's mm. it's absolutely amazing. It's not a cheap stack, but it's an no. S tier stack, one hundred percent. And I think mm. everybody can agree. Mm. Um, so let's just uh, go over the mechanics real quick while we're on the subject. Yeah. So I guess at the very, very top, and, and the way we sort of explained in the last podcast with John, this wasn't like oh, I looked at all three and went oh that looks great. Let's throw all three together. It was, okay. you know, it was, a, it was a sequential edition starting with MOTC, which we were on, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, it introduced to, and that's a, a fragment of mRNA, an open frame of mRNA, which tells your body to upregulate the biogenesis of mitochondria. So you produce yeah. more mitochondria. Uh, but when you produce more mitochondria, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got more capacity for oxidative phosphorylation or energy turnover if they're dysfunctional. So you have to make sure then that the number of mitochondria that you have are operating efficiently. And that was where then when SLU became available, I thought, well, SLU studies show great promise in acting on the estrogen-like receptor as an agonist of the E or or alpha. And so that estrogen-like receptor is involved in the efficiency of the mitochondrial inner matrix and membrane. So now you're improving how well the mitochondria are able to generate, um, I guess, an ATP from electrons. Mm -hmm. And you're also lowering the oxidative stress consequence that comes from the electron transport chain. So now you've got mitochondria that are generating high efficient energy production without causing i guess spillover oxidative stress from that energy uh, production and then you go one step further and say okay well i've increased the number of mitochondria i've improved their ability to create energy i've lowered their ability to create oxidative stress how can i make them even more efficient and that was when you know i looked at methylene blue as a mm. I guess a supplement or a chemical that improves how the mitochondria are oxygenated, how well they bring oxygen into themselves, but also improve the efficiency of oxidative phosphorylation. Um, and again, you have to view that if you can get your mitochondria operating at a high capacity of high oxidative phosphorylation, you're generating massive amounts of ATP that your cell could normally never create. And that was one of the advantages that as humans, we have that endosymbiosis where we've accommodated this type of bacteria into our body where they get the, I guess, the energy substrate out of what we feed them. And then they feed us with ATP from the electrons. Mm -hmm. That improving their efficiency even more with methylene blue, you, you just, it, I became convinced that when we're dieting, okay, we get brain fog, lack of energy from low caloric intake. But then I started to question to myself that that can't be just the problem. Like it, if everything was running optimally, it shouldn't really matter. Like if you're in a deficit of energy, your body fat is going to make up for the energy deficit that you require to function in an optimal perspective. So that when you're getting into the depths of a diet and you're having to either lower calories too low, you're having to do too much activity to create that energy deficit. Some point along the way, there's an uncoupling between the ability of mm -hmm. your mitochondria 
to use fatty acids for energy or glucose, more so fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And so then you start to question, well, if you're bullying yourself in a diet, the mitochondria are clearly dysfunctional and they are the, obviously the rate limiting factor when it comes to burning fatty acids. Lipolysis obviously is the very top. You release the fatty acids and then the mitochondria utilize them or, you know, the mitochondria in your liver. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, it, you know, is it cheating now that we've sort of uncovered these layers of preaching mitochondrial optimization to the ones then that follow and listen? Um, I don't think so. I think it's just like, it's like biohacking. It's just, just bodybuilding, dude. It's just you know? bodybuilding. I mean, look at the physiques last year at the Mr. Olympia stage of the guys that we know are running the stack. Mm-hmm. They look absolutely stellar. They're top five guys. So, you know, I think it's a game changer for this industry. And I think with a couple of years of development, allowing this oxidative stress to be low, minimizing contest prep brain, partially due to the oxidative stress and just keeping the mitochondrial function upregulated mm-hmm. to the point you're just productive all the way up until you're getting on stage where you can have a normal conversation and do podcasts like you were doing at the highest capacity. Um, it's a game changer for everybody. Like, what did you notice when you removed it one week before surgery? And then I'll fill in after. So I stopped it. I, I stopped everything from that mitochondrial optimization perspective just after Christmas. So by the time I went for the surgery, it was two weeks. I pretty much not taken SLU, uh, methylene blue. MOTC, I would have taken five milligrams of it at the start of December. So by the time I got to the mm-hmm. surgery, it was maybe six weeks since the five milligram dose. Definitely, I noticed, now, I, I wouldn't say I ate a lot of food but I ate more food than usual. And I think that was me just, I wasn't really tracking what I was eating. I was listening to what my body was saying. And then I was just eating my standard clean food diet, but more of it. I definitely found that when I stopped it, my fat consumption went up in Mm. terms of like wanting to eat more, um, I guess, polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats from almonds, macadamias, I found that sort of crept up in my diet. Um, And obviously as a consequence, fat got deposited then with the increased Mm -hmm. caloric intake. Whereas prior to Christmas time, I could not, I wouldn't say I could eat whatever I wanted, but I wasn't really leaning towards high fat foods either. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like overall carbohydrate consumption and fat storage, um, I was maintaining a very lean set point, like what we see when we were training in in England over Christmas, you know, Morgan poked phone a little bit at me when she noticed (laughs) that I was getting softer and she's like, yeah, you're getting a little bit soft there now. And I was like, yeah, I can see how my diet's influencing that. But, you know, going back now to that setup and, you know, mentally approaching nutrition a little bit differently and sort of like, not being restrictive, but not really wanting those foods either. Um, whatever's changed internally from a mitochondrial perspective with putting in methylene blue, SLU, a, a shot of MOTC, you know, I'm back to my high carb, high protein, you know, very low fat nutrition as before. And like I said, over the last two weeks, dropped four kg of, mm. I'd probably say two kg of it was fatty like fatty tissues or fatty acids mobilized um yeah i think it's i think it's a wonderful stack did you notice any difference in cognition between and energy levels overall and, and overall productivity so i i guess i've been lucky in that knowing probably you've probably done the same but i like blocked my schedule anyone that was looking for me when i knew i had the time in <laughs> turkey and then obviously the time afterwards to heal i was like i'm not doing any consults you know i've done my normal work for uh, supplement needs and whatever else but yeah i definitely did notice um how i noticed probably the biggest thing was sleep um mm. in that normally i'll get up very early 5 a.m 5 30 a.m i was almost being lazy and i'd sleep until the kids woke up at 7 a.m and we'd all get up together since going back to the mitochondrial stack to speak I've had no problem getting up again at, at 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. Now, whether that is changing my m- mentality, I, I'm not too sure, but 
I, you know, since resuming, I'm back working early again. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure, but definitely it's something that I missed, put it that way. Yeah. I had the same, I, I took it away and it's, it's the same as when you take TRT out the first two weeks, you're fine. And then, uh, and then after <laughs> Kurt's like, what, what? <laughs> she goes, Hey man, I had to get my wife pregnant. I know, point, I, know, right? I know. <laughs> so, so you take TRT out in the first two weeks, you're fine. And then uh, the, the second two weeks, like week three and four, you're like, something is missing. <laughs> and then week five and six, you're like, F my life. This is horrible. So you're like at week three to four of removing TRT where you just come back down to baseline, but you know what's possible with these compounds where you just feel more energetic, more cognitive. I mean, it has a good amount of nootropic effect and it's probably coming from the methylene blue, but the mitochondrial upregulation in your brain also helps with cognition. So I just feel a lot more heightened business-wise even in a steep caloric deficit. So you're you're basically just working all day and, and getting your work done. And then at the end of the day, you're leaner. I'm like, hmm, that's pretty good. Because yeah, normally maybe. during dieting, you just feel horrible towards the end. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the 5-amino-1-MQ addition, which helps with NAD plus recycling in adipose tissue. So the fat loss is continuous. So even when you start stalling around 6%, 8% body fat, um, instead of throwing the kitchen sink of thyroid hormones and, and, and uh, clenbuterol at it. You just add 5-amino-1-MQ to help with uh, nicotinamide, what is it, not N-methyltransferase in inhibition and NAD plus levels go up. And thus the adipose tissue is just metabolically more active. So you keep the lipolysis going. So that I found that a nice addition. Then of course you can combine it with NAD plus, NMN, NR, but you know, those are really very low on the priority list of fat loss which would still be a good addition in the stack, in my opinion. But it would be an add-on, just like ubiquinol and PQQ. Mm -hmm. And if, if you have unlimited funds, 5-amino-1-MQ, um, nicotinamide mononucleotide, IV NAD+, SLUPP332, <laughs> MOD-C, and uh, what, what did I forget? Um, let, me, let me go through P my... PQQ and ubiquinol. <laughs> yeah, PQQ and ubiquinol, yeah, and MOTC, yeah. So that would be like, an, and I, I ran all that stuff, and carnitine to help with, uh, you know, the, the fatty acid shuttling. Um, so I would say S tier, 100%. Uh, like S plus. I think, the, S plus. I think this is the most <laughs> S tier of all of them. Kurt, you didn't get a chance to. Uh, I've never used any of them, but you, the more you guys talk about it, maybe I will. I, I, maybe you can contact um, Chase because, you know, we're working with Sim sponsor affiliate okay. and he's probably got some stock. So maybe he can bring you some. Okay. And, uh, and otherwise Let's I can ask him. them to uh, send you a care package. I'm sure okay. you, you would love it. You know, yeah. and you can just run around with your kids all day playing, you know, <laughs> playing cool. stuff. You get so much energy from this stuff. It's unbelievable. Cool. It's almost, it's almost, uh, it shouldn't be there. Like I feel so like I don't need the crystal meth anymore. No, no, <laughs> okay. you could stop buying all those ingredients. Probably, probably, you just healthy, probably healthy. Yeah, yeah. You okay. can actually eat on this stuff also. You don't see ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth won't fall out. That's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was it, meth? Not even once? That, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh... <laughs> SLU, not even once. 